Hey kids, Mr. Stanley here. Welcome to Children's Church. It looks a little bit different today. I'm a little bit closer to the camera than I normally am because I'm going to be showing you some cool stuff with our Bible story today. But I'm so glad that you are here for Children's Church. Let's get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So if you have had anything happen to you in the last week that made you super happy, made you super excited, I want you to name that in just a minute when we have a moment of silence and we'll tell God thank you for those things. Guys, if you know someone that is sick or sad or hurting, I want you to name those people so that we can ask God to help them in just a minute when we pray. And then guys, if you're struggling with something, if you're going through something hard or sad or difficult, I want you to name that. We're going to lift those things up to God as well to open in prayer here at Children's Church. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds of silence to mention those things, and then we're going to pray to God together. So your time of silence starts now. Say those things. All right, great job, kids. I couldn't hear what you said, but God heard each and everything that you mentioned. And we're going to lift those things up to God in prayer now. So if you'll bow your heads, close your eyes, let's pray to God. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings and the fun and exciting and great things that you have given us in our lives. For those things that make us happy, those things that make us excited, we tell you thank you, God. And God, for people in our lives who are sick or sad or hurting and just need you right now, God, we pray that you would be with them. We pray that you would help them. We pray that you would let them know that they are loved by us and that they're loved by you. And God, for all the kids that are listening, for anything they're struggling with, God, anything that they're going through that's making them sad or worried or anxious, I pray that you would be with them and that you would help them with those things. And God, I pray that you'd be with us now during Children's Church. Help us to have a lot of fun and learn a lot about you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Great job, kids. All right, after we open with prayer, we always move on to the Lord's Prayer. All right, and you've heard me say this a lot. The reason the Lord's Prayer is so important is because one day when Jesus was with his disciples, his best friends, they asked him, they said, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And he taught his disciples, his best friends, how to pray using this prayer. And we call it the Lord's Prayer. We pray it every single Sunday, whether you come to traditional worship or the gathering worship service or here to Children's Church, we pray this prayer together. And it starts our Father. So if you know it, pray along with me. If you don't, just listen to the words and you'll pick it up as you come to church more and more. So let's again put our hands together, bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, again, great job, kids. Now we move on to our Bible story, and this is one of the most fun Bible stories we do all year. It's one of the most important stories in the Bible, because what is the big holiday that happens right after Thanksgiving? Say it out loud if you're excited about it. It's Christmas, right? And guys, we celebrate Christmas. We do all these fun things at Christmas. You can think of them right now. We look at Christmas lights, we have Christmas parties, we open presents, we sing Christmas carols, we do all these great things. But the reason we celebrate is because of Jesus. We celebrate Christmas because that is when Jesus was born. And I'm going to tell you that story. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be telling the story of Jesus' birth. All right? So, I, there, again, I told you the reason the camera's a little closer is because I'm going to use something over here to let you look at some of the characters and things in the Christmas story. All right, so here we go. The Christmas story starts with a girl, all right? And here's the girl, and her name was Mary. So I'm going to put Mary right here. We believe that Mary was a young girl. She's about 16 to 20 years old when this Christmas story happens. And one day, she's going about her day, 
doing the thing she always does during the day when someone comes to visit her. Okay? Let me find the someone. The someone is... What's that? I did preschool chapel earlier and someone said, It's a fairy! Well, it does kind of look like a fairy because it has wings, but in the Bible, if a character has wings, that character is an angel. Okay? And this angel has a name. This angel is the angel Gabriel. Okay? And Gabriel comes to visit Mary. Okay? Gabriel comes to visit Mary. And the Bible says Mary, when she saw Gabriel, was afraid. She had never seen anything like this, so she was scared. But Gabriel said, Mary, don't be afraid. God has chosen you for a wonderful job. You are going to become pregnant, and you are going to have a baby, and you're going to name that baby Jesus. All right? And Mary is still a little scared. She's a little nervous. She knows that this is a big responsibility. This is a big job. But Mary loves God. Mary trusts God. And so she tells Gabriel, I'll do it. All right? Okay? So now we go to another character. Let's see in my bag here. Let's see if I can find this person. All right? This is Mary's fiance. This is the person that Mary is engaged to. Anybody know his name? I heard it, I think. You got it. His name is Joseph. So let's put Joseph over here by Mary. And actually, Gabriel comes to visit Joseph as well. Gabriel visits Joseph. Now, it's a little different. He, Gabriel came to visit Mary while she was awake. When he comes to visit Joseph, Joseph's asleep. He has a dream. And in the dream, Gabriel comes to him. And Gabriel says, Joseph. God has chosen Mary for a very important job, a very special, amazing job. Mary is going to give birth to God's son, Jesus, and Mary is going to need your help. And Joseph wakes up, and Joseph says, I will help. I will do what God is asking me to do. And the angel goes away. Say, bye, Gabriel. Gabriel goes away. And so we have Mary. That's Joseph. And we have Mary. And it happens. Mary becomes pregnant, all right? And she becomes pregnant, and near the end of her pregnancy, she's very, very pregnant, all right? And something happens at that time. Something that's not very good for Mary, who is very pregnant, all right? The emperor of the land that they lived in called Rome, his name was Caesar Augustus. You've probably heard that name if you've heard the Christmas story or listened to the Charlie Brown Christmas story. Christmas special. Caesar Augustus comes out and he says, I want to know how many people live in my kingdom. I want to know how many people there are in all of Rome. And he says, so I need to count the people. So here's what I need you to do. I need the head of every household to take their family to the city where they were born and go there and tell them that they are alive and write their name down on a piece of paper so that then he can count all these pieces of paper from all over his land to know how many people live in Rome. And Joseph was born in, you know what city? He was born in Bethlehem. So he and Mary now have to travel to Bethlehem. And Mary is pregnant, all right? And it's a long, long journey. They have to travel, we think, about 90 miles. And were there any cars? Nope. Were there airplanes? Nope. Were there trains? Nope. They had to walk 90 miles to get to Bethlehem. Now, we believe Mary may not have walked the whole way. What might Mary have ridden to Bethlehem? Right? All right, so I have one of those in here. Let's see. Mary probably rode a donkey. All right, there's the donkey. So we're going to put the donkey beside Mary. But it was 90 miles. They had to go to Bethlehem. It took a while to get there. They were probably a little slower than most people getting to Bethlehem because Mary was pregnant. And so by the time they get to Bethlehem, they start walking to different houses, to different hotels, and saying, hey, does anyone have a room that we can stay in? And every house they go to, the owner of every house says, all of our rooms are full. You're one of the last people to arrive here in Bethlehem. All of our rooms are taken. And so they keep looking and they keep looking and people keep saying, we don't have any room. Until finally they show up at one house and the man at the house says, I don't have a room for you. There's no rooms left, but behind my house there is a stable. All right? A 
and there's the stable. Now, if you've never heard this, a stable was basically a barn. A stable is where the animals live. You would have cows, you would have donkeys, you would have sheep, maybe, that live in the barn. This is where they slept at night, but that was the only place Mary and Joseph could find. And so they went to the stable, and while they were there, while they were staying in the stable, baby Jesus was born. All right? Let me find him. Here's baby Jesus. He's wrapped in swaddling cloth. That's what the Bible calls it. And baby Jesus is born, and they need somewhere to lay baby Jesus down to go to sleep. And they didn't have a crib. They didn't have a bed because they're in the stable. The only thing they could find to put baby Jesus in was a manger. All right? And a manger was basically, if you look at it, it's got hay in it. This is what the animals ate out of. It was normally had straw or hay in it so that the horses, the donkeys, and other animals could eat out of it. But this is where they laid baby Jesus down to sleep. All right? And guys, that's how baby Jesus, that's how Jesus was born. All right? And that's why we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas because it's Jesus' birthday. And we're going to talk a lot about Jesus and how special Jesus was as we get into the spring and as we continue to talk after the new year. But this is why Christmas is so important. It's because we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate that Jesus was born. All right? And so, guys, I want you to come back next week because we're not done. This isn't the end of the Christmas story. This isn't the end of the nativity scene because other people are going to come to visit Jesus. And we're going to add them to our scene next week. But here's what I want you to think about this week. If you do an Advent wreath at your house, or if you've come to church and you see us lighting the candles, the candle that we're lighting this week is the second purple candle. It's the candle of love. So I want you to think for just a minute, in the story I just told you, where do we see love? Think about it just a second. You can say it out loud. All right, I'm sure some of you got it. There's two answers, I think. And the first one, the obvious one, is we see the love in Mary and Joseph towards baby Jesus. I'm a father. I have two kids. And I can tell you, when you first hold your baby after your baby has been born, it is such a love-filled moment. You love that baby so much. And that love only grows as the baby gets older and becomes a kid. And you can ask your parents about that. I know they would tell you that when you were born, they were filled with love for you. And that love's grown bigger and bigger as you've gotten older. So I think we see love in Mary and Joseph towards Jesus. But guys, what I really want you to think about this week, I believe that this story shows God's love towards all of us. That we see that in this story. Because because guys, you see, Jesus was born for us. Jesus was born in a manger, in a stable, in Bethlehem for us. Then Jesus lived his life for us. And at the end of Jesus' life, Jesus died for us. So that if we believe in him, our sins are forgiven. We can be friends with God. And one day, a long time from now, when we die, we can live with God forever and ever in heaven. So guys, God sent Jesus for us. Jesus is a gift for us. So I want you to think about that this week. That God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. And we see that. In the Christmas story. All right, can you remember that for me? If you can remember that for me, give me two big thumbs up. Awesome. All right, remember, come back next week. We're going to add characters to this and talk about what happens right after Jesus was born. But let's close in prayer now, and then we'll head our separate ways. All right, let's put our hands together, bow our heads, and let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you that at Christmas we celebrate Jesus' birth. And we thank you that you show us how much you love us by sending Jesus to be born for us, to live for us, and to die for us so that we can be friends with you. Thank you so much for watching over us today. Thank you for Children's Church, and I pray that you be with each and every child as they go through the Christmas season. And I pray you help them to remember that it's all about Jesus. We love you, God, and we thank you for this day. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.